So how many alphas and betas have you guys actually been a part of? I know a few of them, but I probably don't know them all. I've been in right? Minecraft, I've been in Terraria, I've been in, uh, I think those are the only two, but I had one of my buddies, he used to be a game tester, so he told me all the time about stuff. But I started playing during the casual times, I believe. I've oh, only okay. been in the uh, three World of Warcraft betas, and Path of Exile, and Diablo 3, I was in that beta as well. Don't forget Hawken. Oh, and Hawken. Oh, yeah, and I got Hawken. into the Hawken beta. I was yeah. in Hawken, too. I forgot about that. And the SimCity beta, although that wasn't a beta at all, it was just a stress test on their servers. Eh, it's still kind of a beta. You did find a bunch of bugs, I heard, though. Yeah. There was a really weird, quirky bug for a couple of the systems on SimCity, where one was the garbage trucks would be delivering, uh, trying to get the garbage, and they would kind of go in a loop and freak out, and just loop and loop and loop and loop and loop. <laughs> You had to destroy the road to make them stop. They were patrolling for extra trash. Patrolling for extra trash. Ex excellent. Uh, my alpha beta list is pretty similar to yours, Grover. Uh, stuff like Minecraft and Terraria. Oh, Don't Starve. We both were on that one. That's right. I did do the alpha Don't Starve. I'm not even sure how I got on the Lord of the Rings online beta. It was an invitation, and I didn't know anybody who was even interested in the game, let alone trying it out. It must have been something else I was with EA with at the time. So, But yeah, just oh. out of the blue, I got this beta invitation, so... So I figured I'd See, check it out. I got I got items off my head. I forgot about I got Planetside Two Tribes. Think, think, think. There is one that I can't remember, and I know that there was beta that you couldn't get into normally. Which one was it? My goodness, <laughs> I, I it's lost. Of course, this isn't including all the demos that I've played over the years. That would make that list a lot bigger, but. It's hard to tell when a demo is a beta version or if it's a final version that's just been cut down. So Yeah, the SimCity 5 was almost certainly a different version of SimCity. So uh, people were like, oh my god, this is horrible. I'm like, it's a demo. <laughs> Half the stuff wasn't in there. It may still not be their cup of tea. They may be more used to the older games. Yeah, that's, this is unfortunately a situation when it comes to the Sims uh, for those. Uh, you know, switch into a little more casual to get more casual attention, although pleasing the, you know, the uh, Titan Itch group. Titan Itch. And the Titan Itch group needs to understand that EA is in it for the money. Maxis is in it for the money. Well, they're in it for the game, but the majority thing, since they have shareholders, is profit. Mm -hmm. And they have to make a profit to continue. And This seems more like a actual effort, though, than, say, SimCity Societies, though. Yeah, SimCity Societies wasn't even made by... Uh, it was made by Maxis, but nobody from the SimCity projects or anything worked on it. And it wasn't an awful game. It was just more comparable to a puzzle game than it was a simulator. It was like SimCity for toddlers. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, that's why it was like a two-year-old could play it. That didn't make it bad, it just made it very simple. Mm -hmm. A little too simple for me. I didn't like it very much. And we can actually add something else that we didn't quite get to during our glitches episode. Because of the way alphas and betas are done nowadays, it was partially probably because of how many games weren't quite completed when they launch. So there's always these major patches that come out to existing games because of, like Mike was saying, the Internet Society's made it a little easier for companies to release a game and, oh, if there's something that we need to fix later, we can just, you know, throw a patch at it, have them download unlike, it, install, and things are fine again. Exactly. Unlike before, that if there was something wrong once it was released, that was it. You're screwed. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of games that might have taken a little more time in the testing period because of glitches they knew were there, and this is for console games, too. They, they're oh, getting yeah. patches after the fact, rather than making sure their game was perfect at launch. And there's a lot of companies that are actually kind of famed for doing this. Valve and, and Blizzard and several other companies tend to take their time before a launch, and a lot of times they still end up with tons of patches and tons of glitches. So I think that may be one of the reasons, is there's only so long you can hold on to a game, you start losing money from it, and people are starting to lose excitement for it, so... Mm -hmm. You don't see too many games held back too far anymore. Bethesda games usually have that situation all the time. Mm -hmm. There's just so much in those games that they have to work on, and they're just like, there's no way they're going to find every bug. It's impossible. The bigger, the more complicated the game, the harder it is to fix. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with playing World of Warcraft betas. Like, it always sounds really like a good idea, or like it might be fun. And then I get into it, and I'm like, you know, I'm not going to want to do this again when the game comes out, so I probably shouldn't do the beta. <laughs> seen the content before you actually get to play it, kind of. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the betas you were talking about, that even the collision detection with the very ground was all screwed up. Was that uh, Planet Side 2? No, Cataclysm for World of Warcraft. Oh, oh, okay. Not that Planet Side probably didn't do it, too. It's because... Planet Side had a hilarious bug that uh, when you died, there's a random chance to respawn that you would respawn underneath the map and fall to your doom again. <laughs> 
Uh, the Cataclysm bug was because they were redoing entire maps. Mm -hmm. Like There were some areas of the game that if you took a flight path over an area that was under construction, it would kick you off the server. Oh man. Yeah. Because it was trying so to load were, information were, that wasn't there, probably. Right. There were bugs like that all over the place. Those were fun to report. <laughs> So do you think this whole alpha beta thing is kind of a future? Yeah. I think it is. I think a lot of them, a lot of the companies realize now, oh boy, you know, we can release the beta and get paid for it. Mm -hmm. And the players will do the testing for us. There are a few players that bitch about getting a beta release. You know, the simple solution everybody has from this, don't buy it until they say it's, it's finished. And yeah, I think it's fantastic to have it the way it is. But it just seems like people are calling... St there's a thing with Don't Starve where it's, they're kind of confused. The game to me is alpha. It is not beta. Mm -hmm. Just like Minecraft, when they were calling it beta, we were like, I was like, no, this is an alpha. This is not beta. They just seem to f slap, you know, beta on Well, the to, thing uh, about alphas is, is they're usually very crash heavy because the engine isn't quite up to code. Betas are usually very playable. Yeah, very playable. That's, that's what I mean. And I would kind of consider Minecraft and most of its own incarnations and darn, don't, my brain, man. Don't Starve is probably on that level, too. It's perfectly playable, but you can definitely tell it's not done. Which yeah. is the odd thing about Minecraft, because no matter how much they add to it, and this is probably going to be a problem with a lot of games that use this whole alpha developing process, because people have gotten so used to it always upgrading, always evolving, if it ever stopped, people would think the game was quit by the developers, rather than them continuing to push it forward. Yeah. Which is what happened to Terraria. They they stopped making advancements for it, and now few people care about it anymore. Yeah, I don't think anybody plays it anymore. Not that the game's gotten bad, it's just everybody was getting used to the idea of having these updates every week or every month. It's a thing, uh, you keep adding to the game so the game seems fresh. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, the game goes stale, and we've seen it. You, you can only play a game so many times before it's just like, okay, I've done everything, I can't do anything else. Else, and you bid farewell to the world that you were playing on, and you move on. So, being that Notch is who he is and his business style, we're pretty sure of how Minecraft's going to continue going. It's going to be like it has been. Most companies are not like that, however. So, for example, if this alpha-style system started getting more mainstream into video games, mm -hmm. and it's hard to say that it hasn't because of Minecraft, but I'm talking about the big boys like Activision and Electronic Arts and Capcom and all those... If they were to start making games like that, you know good and well most of their upgrades are going to be DLC that you have to pay for. Yeah. It would be and I'm of, wondering if that could actually destroy the game market. I think yeah. it could. That's scary. Betas, I see, are either are for smaller companies or free-to-play. Mm -hmm. Well, free-to-play is getting awful uh, attention getting, too, because of the whole style that the Korean MMOs had started about the game is free-to-play, but in order to get the good stuff that you have to pay real money for. And it's a design system that's really worked for the browser games, and and it's worked mm -hmm. very well for the MMOs, and I'm kind of curious if it might start working in other directions, too. Because there was, uh, there's a lot of these first-person shooters that are on the lower scale, but are still trying to you know, keep up with uh, competitors like Call of Duty and Halo and such, where the game is free, to play it online is free, but to get the good gear and the alternate equipment and stuff like that, you pretty much have to pay for it. And then you have uh, games like League of Legends, where... You can grind your way into getting almost everything in the game for free, or you, you can, get, can everything. get ahead and pay for it when you want. Yeah, that's the kind of game I was talking about. There's also other free plays where you can get everything. You don't ever have to pay, mm -hmm. but you're going to work your ass off. You oh, yeah. are going to go nuts. You're going to be dedicated to that game, or you can throw a little money at it from time to time and uh, make things a little easier. Which, for League of Legends, when I really enjoy a game, especially when it's free to play... I consider throwing maybe about $60 at him over the time of my playing it. That way, for me, it's kind of like saying, okay, you got me to like this game, it's free, but I'm going to throw you what I would normally pay for a video game. Mm -hmm. And usually, if you look, and it's interesting enough, $60 for each of those free plays is usually enough to get you almost most of the stuff in the game. So it's like you pay for the game instead of that you just unlock all the stuff immediately. It's kind of player preference. Yeah. Now, there's some stuff that I kind of shake my head out of why would you pay that much for a cosmetic change. For example, the avatars on like the Xbox Live. I do the, not understand the people that go nuts for that. Yeah. Actually, I, there's one thing on League of Legends that you can't buy, and that's skins. I thought you, you could have, get those too. I, I mean, yeah, you have to buy them. Not, not through leveling. Nope, you have to buy them. 
The skins don't affect anything, but they customize your character and make them look cool. And sometimes they give them different voice yeah. to fit uh, the skin, which is a nifty little addition. And I'm not against uh, changing the looks of stuff. I mean, I played Second Life long enough and put enough money into it that I can appreciate the, the changes to be made to a character that normally probably wouldn't. Uh, you see it all the time in fighting games these days about these alternate costumes that you can buy. Mm-hmm. There are some pros and cons for uh, the free-to-play. Some companies... Also, uh, one of the major ones that have been the worst at it, Zynga, <laughs> where uh, they're so <laughs> worried about making the next thing and making more profit that they let bugs go crazy galore. And they're just like, well, you know, we'll just add this and they'll forgive us. And you know, they're never thinking, okay, we need to stop for a little while and fix some of this stuff. They never do. They never do. They just keep adding and adding and adding. They'd rather call a particular game that's lost everybody just a failure rather than all these glitches kind of killed it for everybody. Yeah. It's it's sad to see some of the games like Fishville or Petville that are now dead. And a lot bad. of those did the same kind of stuff that we were talking about, too. Most of those started as betas. Yeah. People weren't uh, playing the finished version when they first came out. Petville and Fishville never left beta, ever. I'm not I sure Frontierville has yet, either. <laughs> and they're no, already out of Frontierville, too. too. And Farmville's still beta. It's been out for three years. Uh, I thought it was older than that. Oh, yeah. Actually, it is older. It's about five years old. It's still beta. <laughs> I mean, uh, from what I see, they release something new every month, and that's why it drove me crazy. I'm just like, stop, 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 stop. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just keeping up with it. Yeah. It, some of the stuff that they were adding were mandatory, and that's kind of what broke the game for some people. And then they have the extra stuff, you know, like holiday stuff. And I'm just trying to do my farm. <laughs> you know, this stuff pops up, and you have to do this stuff. Otherwise, you can't keep up with your daily stuff in the game. It was going on in in uh, Mafia Wars, where you had to go find Santa Claus or something during the Christmas one. <laughs> well, you could choose to ignore them, but it wasn't easy. Especially yeah. since everybody else was playing them, and generally those games really demand you to play with other people to get exactly. in there. Uh, let's Mafia hope we never see the day when the, the mainstream games are doing that same sort of thing. And I'm when SimCity was doing what it was doing, I was kind of worried they were heading in that direction. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind if they did it like every six months, added a humongous expansion, which, you know, that'd be great, but to do it every two weeks or so, that'd be terrifying. <laughs> You'd never know what was new. It'd like, you never get used to it, and, you know, maybe that's that's cool because it keeps the game fresh, but for mm -hmm. me, sometimes it keeps it a little too fresh, I mean, because there's so much stuff. And, you know, you're thinking you've got everything figured out, and uh, they add more stuff, but then they change stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're doing what you usually do, and something that used to, you know, in Farmville, something, I remember the sheep used to take, like, two pieces of whatever, and you get that strategy down, and you go to do it, and then uh, you go in the next day, and it requires four. And suddenly, your entire strategy of how you do stuff completely goes head over heels, and you're just like, was this necessary? And unfortunately, the worst one, the Frontier Bill, when it first came out, was very simple, and a very, very good game, and I played the crap out of it. It was pretty I buggy. It. it was a it little was on the buggy. unstable side, but... Yeah, it was buggy, and it did randomly kick you out and has to restart. Then they started adding stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are the and worst, though. Those bugs that randomly make you not able to play. <laughs> pops up on your screen that the servers became unsynced and you get kicked out. Yeah. And they actually did fix that early on, and for a while it was good. Then they started adding stuff, and it became one of the most notorious things for them adding crap. You couldn't even have place in, on the playing field to put everything. That was the yeah. goofiest part. So they had to start expanding, and even expanding wasn't enough. But there were some exploits. Like I, At one point, I knew that if you added like a 50,000 chickens to your area and just farmed them with the uh, chicken farm thing daily, you can get roughly tens of thousands of experience every day. <laughs> That is to say, if your computer can handle all those animated flash chickens running around. Yeah, it, it, they really bogged your computer down. To fix that bug, they added something that when you use the, the chicken coop, how many chickens you have determines the chance of coyotes appearing and eating them. <laughs> and after after you had, I think it was like 50 chickens, the chance of a coyote or more than one appearing was, uh, was 100%. Because I remember the first time I did it when I had my thousands of chickens, I think roughly 15 coyotes came and murdered at least 300 of them. <laughs> It was horrible. You should probably get off Zynga a little bit, though. Yeah, listen, we, can, we can beat the doo doo out of Zynga all day long. But yeah, I'm already out of notes. I know. I'm thinking harder. So I was like, I could easily fill an hour up on this, and I'm like, oh. Doo doo. We're not far from there. No, we're not. If we can hit 45, I'll go ahead and close this out. I know there's a lot of edits that is probably going to make this maybe a shorter show than usual, but. That's okay. We've had some longer shows than usual. We can handle a 45-minute episode. Yeah. I think maybe with the 
the whole digital age on the consoles coming about or Xbox Live. Everybody's got Xbox Live and PlayStation Network and the Wii U has so many Wii, different Wii shops on there. Do you think they'll ever get to where they're going to digitally distribute maybe a beta? I wouldn't be at all surprised. It wouldn't surprise yeah. me at all if they did it, and I think it'd be pretty useful. They could really uh, get the communities involved in some of their games. And technically, they already have. Every time there's a new Call of Duty or a Halo or even some other games, it seems like Borderland had one. When they have a small beta invitational sort of thing, sometimes you oh, have yeah, to buy, yeah. uh, I think it was, what was it? If you bought a particular Halo, then you, I think it was Halo 3, and you got the, the beta keys for ODST or something like that? Yeah. No, I bought Halo 3, and I didn't get any beta keys. I don't remember which. It may have been buying H? ODST, and you got the beta for 4. I don't know. 4 came out because much later. Halo 3 was what the was last it? one. I got so maybe it was Reach. Oh, Reach. Yes. Okay. That sounds. I think funny. it was Reach because my yeah Andrew got Reach. So yeah. yeah. But yeah, they do stuff like that every now and then. And, but you know, betas only last so long. They don't keep them up for very long. I think the longest no. they generally run those is like a month. Yeah. Or like SM City three days. <sighs> An hour apiece. That was such a letdown. I was expecting to like still be playing that game constantly, and they're like, "Oh, you get to play an hour, or, like an hour." I've been waiting for this game for a year and a half, and you tell me an hour? Yeah, but <laughs> it's not too far from the launch. You got what three yeah. months? No, it comes out on the fifth of March. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's not too bad. You can wait a month. Yeah, I can wait a month. I waited ten years already. I can wait a month. I waited how long for Marvel vs. Capcom three? <laughs> long time. <laughs> ten years. Duke Nukem forever. <laughs> took forever. It took forever, and it was pieces. Doo doo. I wasn't that bad. The it's multiplayer was. The multiplayer yeah, was bad. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Single player, I think that was more. People had to just kind of let go of certain things that they were That's expecting the game to be. Yeah. If they expected it to be glorious like Crisis, then they're in for rude awakening. <laughs> Kind of closing up, we've already talked about that the, the future of alphas and betas is probably going to continue currently the way it has gone so far, and the fear of how some might turn it into a DLC issue. But Mm-mm. but the good things have come from this. Uh, on Steam, as you see, you can play the beta builds now on almost all the games and oh, yeah. go in and report bugs. So very awesome things have come from it. Especially and I do that, indie titles. I do that for uh, many of my games on there now. And that whole Double Fine project, mm-hmm. where they were... Having people vote by releasing their beta on uh, the like Indie Humble Bundle, which is probably coming up before too long. I'm not sure when that launches. I haven't heard a date yet for it, but I'm not and sure how also, many games are actually getting on that list either. It's also introducing uh, Kickstarter kind of has allowed uh, the betas to appear. It's allowed more companies that would otherwise fail to come to life, and you start seeing games that normally would have fell through and never made it anywhere. And it shows the support for a particular brand or niche that maybe have been ignored by the white suits of advertising agencies within the the bigger franchise companies. Exactly. It's very much like self-publishing in the uh, book industry. So we're seeing people, yes, we do still want our XCOMs. Yes, we still want our strategy games and our simulator games. We want the return of our space combat games, like Star Citizen has proved. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, we know there's not enough people for a uh, company like EA to be interested in something like that until it becomes so popular that they're like, hey, you know, we'd be all interested in taking this over for you and the uh, little tiny group that has now grown into a behemoth because they got the assistance they need gives them the big middle finger. <laughs> I mean, if I remember correctly, didn't Microsoft offer to buy Minecraft? And I think... I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't think I've heard about it. I think oh, EA no. offered, and it's just something, you know, had he sent that to someone like EA or Nintendo or whatever, they would have laughed him out of the room when Minecraft first came out. First came out, yeah. 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 Even now, they may have done it. They were just like, what is this? I think they would have saw the sales, but then again, they might have thought, well, how much longer can this last? And then here well, we the- found out they sold what, almost another million copies over the Christmas season alone. Yeah, but let's play a scenario. Say that he struggled with, uh, like, one other person. Say him and Notch and Jeb are living in shack, desperately grinding Minecraft as it is now, and they've worked and made no money, and they go show this to, like, EA or one of the higher companies. They're probably going to get laughed at. To see it just run, yes. If they had people inside the company that might have played it, that could be different, because that's usually what happens. People scoff at it until they get behind the wheel themselves. Mm-hmm. And that a was... Lot of people, matter of fact, people I, I encourage everybody to watch a documentary a documentary on uh, Minecraft that I think is just called Minecraft. I saw it a couple of weeks back. It's... I haven't seen it yet. Not only is it good for Minecraft lovers, I think it's good for people that want to get into the video game business, because it shows a lot of what Notch and 
Jeb and the rest of them went through from basically point A to point B. The documentary... Why do I keep saying it like that? The documentary pretty much picks up uh, right after the big boom, but it follows them through the entire course of, I think it was 2011. So there was a lot of interesting information there for pretty much anybody that's interested in the gaming business and how it's evolved because of this game. Yeah. That's where I found out uh, Peter Molyneux basically quit his own company at Lion's Head because he was so moved about how the game Minecraft had been made and marketed and how it was completely different than anything anybody would have ever expected. And because of that, he wants to reevaluate his own game career. It just shows him that you don't have to follow the rules of the big companies. Mm -hmm. Indie publishers, for the word. Making games for gamers rather than... And making them for themselves. Yeah, making them for themselves. If you enjoy playing it, a lot of other people probably will too. And even if not, you know, if you only have a tight niche tight niche group of people that play it, say roughly 10,000, that's, that's, that's still nice. And even when the sales don't quite come back, like what happened to poor Psychonauts and Beyond Good and Evil, there is still a lot of people that love that game that's getting into it far after the fact, and there's a lot of people that want sequels to games like those. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like Don't Starve, how that... With how that made us, but... Well, it kind of does, you know, how, uh, I mean, literally, we can thank Notch for, uh, he opened up this revolutionary area. Betas are no longer behind closed doors most of the time, and they're, they're wide open. You're showing what it may be, and the gaming community can alter what somebody thinks of something, you know, that they make the game, and the community says, this is really good, but, you know, this could be different. We don't like it. And they change it in the beta, and then everybody's like, oh, this is fantastic. I don't think we'll ever see the end of beta releases Never. in some form or the other. There will always be beta. There's beta for everything outside of the video. There, there's beta books where, you know, you go brief reading and stuff. Mm -hmm. I know that for a fact as a writer. So we, we may went on a few tangents here and there, but I think we hit the topic pretty well. Yeah, it was, it's a hard topic. It's not as easy as you first think. Mm -mm. Like, oh, I played a beta, I can do this. No, really, a little bit more. <laughs> It's more than just, yeah, playing a game that's not completed yet. Yeah. There's a whole science, a whole marketing. We put it this way, that right now, any given time, there's still professional game testers that are in the mm -hmm. big game companies. And they do it because they like their job. They also do it because they want to make sure that when we players, the ones that get to use it outside of the beta, get the game that there are bugs and they try as hard as they can. And it's also a great ground floor opportunity for somebody to get into the game industry. Very true. Though right now that looks like it's probably very hard to do because of so many studios shut down. You've got all of these named talent. It's kind of just stirring around in the pot looking for a job right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's still an open door. You can leave the commit. You can leave game testing and come back later. Mm -hmm. Unless you're awful at it. <laughs> unless you, yeah, unless Your name gets around. Unless you're terrible and you don't know what the hell you're doing. That's pretty much our show for this week. Join us every Monday for the next Printicast. Uh, hopefully we'll get this one up in time. I don't mm. see why not. The, like I like I said, the, the video is going to be kind of eh this time. But it should be entertaining. Um, and of course it's Monday, Tuesday, technically. But uh, I can't think of a single thing to say. Any closing <laughs> statements? None that I can think of. Negative? Ring, ring! Somebody has a closing statement. So we'll see you next week. See you next see time. See you next time.